So last week we talked about what it means for a breeder to be hitting the odds, and we learned that it has to do with the likelihood that a particular gene is gonna show up in an egg or in a clutch. I also mentioned recessive and dominant genes, which is what our video is gonna be about this week. So we're actually gonna be talking about recessive, dominant, co-dominant, and incomplete dominant genes in this week's video. Now for each gene pairing, a sexually reproducing organism, like a snake, gets one copy of the gene from their mom and one copy of the gene from their dad. Obviously it gets much more complicated than what we're gonna be talking about today, but since we're focusing primarily on visual representations of mutations in reptiles, specifically in ball pythons, we're gonna narrow our focus on those for our genetics discussion. Now before we really get into talking about different types of genes, let's talk about the default for a ball python. Um, this is something that's uh, generally referred to as either a normal coloration or a wild type coloration. It's basically gonna be the pattern and color that you would generally see in a ball python in the wild. Now both normal and wild type mean the same thing and it can be a little bit of a misnomer because obviously most of the mutations that we have in the hobby today originated in the wild but the wild type coloration is gonna be kind of your, your general default, if you will, for a ball python or any other reptile that we're talking about, any kind of genetic mutations on. Now first, a dominant gene. A dominant gene is gonna be a gene that overrides another variant of the same gene. What this means is that one copy of a true dominant gene is going to display its full visual characteristic in that animal. And it would, be the, it would display the same if you had one copy of the gene or two. Now there are some variations of dominant genes that we're gonna commonly come across in the hobby. So the primary one that you're gonna be coming across in the hobby is gonna be called an incomplete dominant gene. Now some people will refer to these as codominants or codoms. Um, that is a different gene type, so technically they are two different things. Um, and we don't generally come across too many codominant genes in ball pythons like that. Um, but just know if you hear somebody say codom or codominant, they're probably referring to an incomplete dominant gene. An incomplete dominant gene will show in the animal with just one copy of the gene, but the full effects of the gene aren't expressed unless there are two copies. When there are two copies of the gene, the animal is homozygous for that trait. In the hobby, an animal carrying two copies of this gene or being homozygous for that particular gene, if it's an incomplete dominant gene, is referred to as a super version of that gene. So this is Charlie, our Firefly scaleless head ball python. And you can kind of see on his head some of the uh, missing scales on the very top of his head. So what this is, this gene is a incomplete dominant gene. So since he just has one copy of the gene, it basically means that he's only gonna show some variation, meaning in this particular gene, he's gonna be missing just a few scales on the top of his head. But if you've got two copies of that scaleless head gene in an animal, meaning that it is now the super version or homozygous for that gene, it's referred to as a scaleless because as you can see in this little baby, it is missing almost all the scales. It's got maybe a few kind of that show up on like its back but it is a scaleless baby, and it's actually the offspring of this guy. Then we have recessive genes. Recessive genes will not show up at all unless the animal has two copies of that gene. If they have just one, it's, a, it's heterozygous for that particular gene. Now in the hobby, these that only have one copy of the gene that don't display that particular gene because it's recessive are referred to as het, which is short for, you guessed it, heterozygous. However, if an animal has two copies of the recessive gene, it's gonna be referred to either as a visual or just by the name of that particular trait, since that gene is only going to be displayed visually in the animal if they do carry two copies of it. Now, I know that was a little confusing, so I've got a couple examples. So this is Jill. She is a het piebald. One of her parents was a um, visual pied, one of them was a normal. So forgive Jill, she wasn't very much of a fan of chilling on my neck, she just wants to kind of chill right here in the chair. So we're just gonna let her do that. So since one of Jill's parents was a visual piebald, we know that they had two copies of the piebald gene, so they had to pass one of them on to Jill. And because Jill's other parent was a normal ball python, we know that they did not have any piebald genes to pass on to Jill. So she was going to receive one piebald gene and one normal gene. We'll get into details about how those calculations work in a later episode, but for right now, just know that Jill has just one copy of that piebald gene, and therefore she is het pied. Now this is Chick-fil-A. She is a visual piebald ball python, so she's got two copies 
of the piebald gene. So you can see that she's a visual pied pretty clearly by just the blotches of pattern and then the blotches of pure white. Uh, this is one of, in my opinion, the prettiest um, single genes in ball pythons. They're just, they're glorious. So a great tool to use to be able to see different genes and if they're recessive or incomplete dominant is here on Morph Market. So you'll wanna go to morphmarket.com, link is down in the doobly-doo. And up here at the top, you can click on Morphopedia. And then from here, you'll scroll down and you'll click on whichever um, species you're wanting to look at. Um, so for our demonstration, we're gonna be looking at ball pythons. You can see here, there's over 200 different traits that are gonna be listed. So when we've got it loaded. Um, you can see each gene is going to be marked um, as either recessive, dominant, incomplete dominant. We've got a dominant one over here, some incomplete dominants, recessives, right? And they're all kind of color co uh, coordinated. And then other options um, we're not going to really fall into with our um, discussion today, like polygenetic, um, other locality specific, stuff like that. Um, but... If you wanted to look a little bit deeper into a particular gene, so like let's say we wanted to look a little bit deeper at, I don't know, um, let's go chocolate. So we can click on chocolate and you can see additional information. So over here you're going to see high level overview so you can see the type, it's an incomplete dominant, who first produced it, what complex it's in, we'll get into that when we're talking about allelic genes. Um, and then as you scroll down, it'll give you some about information, if there's any history, details on like appearance, body and tail, um, if there's any proven lines, etc. Additionally, it'll tell you if there's any kind of issues. So if there's any kind of health issues, um, so like you can see with the spot nose, there's some issues like the, they uh, exhibit wobble if they're in their super form. So if you've got two copies of spot nose, in a single animal, you can have wobble um, pretty significantly, so it's good to stay away from that. Um, but again, you can kind of scroll down and you can see different things like other issues. Um, spot nose spider tend to show severe wobble. Spot nose champagne shows severe wobble. Um, so you can see details on that, um, which you can kind of factor into any kind of decisions you're making for like breeding projects and things of that nature. Um, you can also get to these from, if you're looking at the actual like ball python um, page here, and you're looking at the um, genes, because you're trying to like search Morph Market to try to find some stuff that you might want to purchase. If you click on the little I, it'll take you to that information page through Morphopedia. So in summary, we talked about recessive and dominant genes. Now, remember, we are going to come across more incomplete dominant genes. Um, probably than anything in the hobby, but there are true dominant genes that exist as well. It's also common to hear incomplete dominant genes referred to as codominant or codoms. And even though this isn't technically correct, it is pretty common to hear people say that in the industry. So it's a good thing to kind of know so that you understand what people are talking about. And with an incomplete dominant gene, if you've got two copies of that gene or the animal is homozygous for that gene, it is commonly referred to as a super version of that gene. And with recessive genes, two copies of the gene are typically going to be referred to either by the gene name or a visual of that gene. Whereas one copy of a recessive gene in an animal is going to make the animal appear normal but is going to be heterozygous for that gene. Now sometimes you'll see percentages listed next to the heterozygous like a 66% het for something. We'll get, we'll get into the details about how that works in a later episode, but for right now, just understanding that heterozygous means that the animal has just one copy of that gene um, is going to be necessary. As always, resources are located down in the doobly-doo. If you liked this video or learned something today, go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button. Next week, we'll be talking about allelic combinations. See you then.